Someone is calling me from way out yonder. It's just a gypsy in my soul. There is no greater life of which I'm fonder. It's just a gypsy in my soul. Ain't got no cares, got no strings. On behalf of the North Carolina Central University Music Department, we'd like to present our graduate uh, trumpet lecture concert by uh, Ms. Angelisha Rogers. Please welcome her, please. Good evening. Good evening. Afternoon, actually. <laughs> this afternoon, we're going to be doing a lecture presentation entitled Trumpetist Clora Bryant Uncovering a Legend. It's a study of life music and history. I'm going to do my lecture this afternoon in two portions. First we're going to do a historical profile and then we're going to get into some cool musical stuff. The contributions of artists such as Louis Armstrong, Roy Eldridge, John Burke's Dizzy Gillespie to the art of jazz trumpet are groundbreaking to the genre. Thus they are direct influences of trumpeters such as Clifford Brown, Miles Davis, and Woody Shaw. However, most historians have not considered the idea of a woman trumpet player having impact. This lecture will tell the story of Clara Bryant and her success as a female jazz instrumentalist in a male-dominated field. Furthermore, I will demonstrate through performed transcriptions how Bryant would musically and stylistically fit into the canon of jazz trumpeters using the mentioned trumpeters as references. The purpose of my project is to acknowledge the musical and historical contributions of Clara Bryant, a woman who was recognized by her contemporaries as an outstanding jazz musician, but whose legacy has since been overlooked due to biases of gendered historiography. Furthermore, this project is in addition to the growing number of studies that are currently being done about women musicians. During the 1940s, women were not easily accepted as jazz instrumentalists. This was due in part to a reflection of social attitudes towards women during the time. Women, especially women of color, were expected to work in domestic capabilities such as cooking and cleaning. One contemporary saxophonist, Red Holloway, quotes, most of the men believed women during that time had no place on the bandstand. In this same fashion, jazz research tends to be negligent of the recognition of female instrumentalists recognizing only performers who fit the stigma of being attractive singers who fronted the band, an example of which being Sarah Vaughan. Several female instrumentalists broke this mold. One notable case is Clara Bryant. Her career began as a member of the Prairie View Co-Ed's all-girls swing band, and she went on to become a vital part of the Central Avenue jazz scene in Los Angeles, California. Influenced by a range of trumpeters, Bryant proved her comp complete competency and capability as a musician, thus becoming a successful jazz performer despite gender, race, or social status. Her ability to maintain working relationships and collaborations with numerous jazz performers illustrates the tenacity needed to persevere and overcome stereotypical views of women instrumentalists in jazz. Clara Bryant was born May 30th, 1927 in Denison, Texas. She is the daughter of Charles Celeste and Louise Bryant. Her mother died at the age of three, and she was raised by her father. Being exposed to music at an early age, Bryant developed a huge interest in music, and at the age of 13, began studying trumpet under Conrad Johnson, who was director of the then Terrell High School in Denison, Texas. Bryant, from playing with her with the Kirby Coeds, learned valuable tips as a musician to help navigate her career. She was able to learn certain do's and don'ts that helped assist her in her transition. These characteristics came in handy with dealing with musicians and the different stereotypes concerning her as a woman. Despite bias, Cora Bryant went on to do several things, including recording with the orchestra for the movie Pepe, and she also was on the orchestra for the popular TV show Frank's Place. She began to tour and travel. She was the lone woman to do a tour in the Soviet Union 
under the request of then the detail. And she also collaborated with Billy Williams and Mary James. Bryant decided to go along with her influences of trumpet players such as Cat Anderson, Dizzy Gillespie, Roy Eldridge, Charlie Shavers, Harry James, and followed their style of articulation and their use of range and different nuances throughout the horn. This also was an appeal to her being a woman because it gave her a big, vibrant presence. Among more of Bryant's contributions was the recording of her long album, Gather for Horn, in 1957. I will read uh, the liner notes from her album. There are far too many people in and out of the music trade whose attitude on female instrumentalists is one of not bad for a woman, but this fallacious thinking is fostered in part by the plethora of male players who seem to set the standard for the business. The hard fact remains, however, that it takes no greater effort for a woman to play a horn than for a man. The usual reaction to Flora Bryant's trumpet playing is one of shock and astonishment. Few people are prepared to accept the fact that this clean, swinging sound is the result of intense training and practice on the part of a mere female with a passion for jazz. Now I'm going to transition to the canon of jazz trumpet players. <clears throat> Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans, and um, he was in the, he is affectionately known of uh, the father of jazz, they call him Pops. Um, Louis Armstrong's playing, he's characteristic for swing rhythms, use of vertical lines or arpeggios in the style of contemporary New Orleans style playing, strong use of tummy and articulations. Louis Armstrong also uses nuances such as quadrados, shapes, half bows to create certain moves in his playing and in improvisation. Another thing about Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong used to develop melodic content consistent with that of vocal, as he was also a singer. He was also recognized for his expansive range, which at the time was a new thing to me. On the solo, A Kiss to Build a Dream On, I'm going to exemplify his, uh, his tummy, the use of vertical lines, the use of different nuances, and characteristic swing rhythms.
for his use of bebops with vast passages, which are linear passages. He also used alternate mannerisms in order to develop speed and dexterity. Dizzy Gillespie departed from the approach of lyrical soloing, of course, to experiment bebop, to fast rhythms and passages. And he also expanded from all ranges of the form, but he was known for his high range of playing as well. Corvon, with a heavy influence by the above mentioned trumpet players, Louis Armstrong, Roy Eldridge, and Dizzy Gillespie, created somewhat of a hybrid style between the three while also employing her own. She used a combination of linear and vertical playing. She also used a combination of characteristic swing rhythms as well as using the bebop rhythms as well. Bryant also experimented with arpeggios, chromatic patterns, the use of nuances such as half violin, growls, and squeals. Now I'm going to perform <coughs> Cora Bryant's solo on making the
on the bebop scene, but then went on to experiment with different kinds of sound, playing. It's also known for cool jazz, and experimentation with that, and mobile jazz as well. Today I'm going to exemplify him on the blues, which is a common jazz form. Miles is known for his melodic style of playing, very melodic and lyrical. He also uses linear, linear and vertical approaches with mixed arpeggios and scalar patterns. <clears throat> his use of articulation ranged from more of a smooth legato tongue to that of a hard tongue as well. He uses ornaments such as bosandos, half vowels, and um, squeals as well to create consistency. Texture, excuse me. And Miles Davis has a range that is more to the mid of the horn, but he also plays with higher things as well. Now I'm going to perform Miles Davis transcription on blues by five. <laughs>
So now becomes the portion of our program where we can have a little bit more fun. Um, so part of our requirements, we have to do arrangements and different things on various tunes. So first, we're going to do an original composition by myself. I would like to dedicate the second half of this performance to my grandparents, Harold and Gloria Spragans. Uh, they got me started in music. And one thing, I'm seeing my grandma's face over and over, and she's dancing. So this goes to her. It's a tune entitled Them Boogie Blues. Mm -hmm. 